In this video, I'm going to be explaining and showing you how to use the smudge brush to great effect in a Findy photo on the iPad. Hello and welcome. Andrew Goodman here and in today's tutorial I'll be teaching you why I duplicate projects, why and when you should use the smudge brush, why use it over other tools, how to use the smudge brush, a few examples of using the smudge brush and much more. So let's get into it. So again we're just going to load up a Findy photo on the iPad. And as I said in the last video, we're going to be looking at this Star Wars poster from time to time. There's a reason why there's, if you look, there's two here. Every so often, if I'm doing a big project like this, I will duplicate it in different steps because Affinity's never crashed in me and I've never lost any files in Affinity Photo. But the fear is there, especially if you're working on a project that contains tons and tons of layers and you can actually see there by me clicking into it normally when i click into a file it doesn't take too long but for this one here it took a an extra an extra two or three seconds just because of the amount of the amount of layers and again i have not named my layers very well at all and there's actually much more layers than this because as i go on with a project like this sometimes i group them together and merge them together and it makes working in these files a wee bit easier so quite often if I'm working on a big project and when you hit back, it actually takes a wee extra wee second to save. So uh, this is the Star Wars Day 2020 and this is Dodge and Burn. So before, and we'll get into Dodge and Burn in another tutorial, but you can you can briefly see, maybe if I just bring this up, you can see the the difference between the two that I've started adding a, a blue glow and a red glow to this. And this hasn't has, uh, this one hasn't had it yet. But there's a reason why we're going into this one here. And it's to look at the smudge tool. The smudge tool is very good if you're doing kind of artistic work on the on a Findy photo. But I don't do too much of that. Uh, when, when I say artistic work, I mean maybe like freehand painting or freehand drawing. And you can, you can start to smudge things together and, and make things look quite cool. But for a photo sense or a compositing sense, why would I want to use... The smudge tool it's just under this wee fire logo the wee fire logo is the the burn brush and dodge brush we'll look into them at another time there's sponge smudge blur sharpen but we'll go into the smudge because i had to use the smudge on this poster and if we zoom in the reason why i had to use it is because believe it or believe it not i hope you're sitting down for this because this is not a real lightsaber this is not a real lightsaber it's actually a toy lightsaber some of you are in shock. Some of you can't believe it. But it's, it's just a toy lightsaber. In all the fun of a photo shoot, really this one should have been held the wrong, the, the other way around because you can see kind of what's this, some of the some of the details about the toy. Now really, no one's going to notice that. They're not going to look at that poster and go, just wait a minute, look at that lightsaber. That's not real because it's got some markings on it. But uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I like going into detail and just, trying to make photos look as good as they can and if this some of these photos i print up pretty big to a2 put them on their door or put them behind their door and and that would be noticeable so it is worthwhile taking the time to do these things now, in the last few videos we have looked at the clone brush and healing brush and that wouldn't just work the same as this we'll we'll, we'll show you very quickly why so it's on the pixel layer there again i have not named these very well but if we go to the the clone brush there's nothing really to clone because there's retinol here and this is a different color orange it wouldn't work the healing brush again that's the wrong color we could maybe try down here and, and try to do some but we're running very quickly we're we're running into problems again the patch tool there's nothing really to patch up from because it's the same thing, so that wouldn't work well. I suppose if you use the clone brush and you went little, you know, get it a low size, little by little, little by little, with a lot of work you could do this, but I just want to do something quite quickly and make it look, you know, when you're working on a poster like this, it's not a big detail, it is a detail, but it's, it's not massive, so without spending maybe just like half an hour, 40 minutes and something no one will ever see, is there another way around it? And that's where the smudge tool comes in. And it's nice when you're working on projects like this because you come across, you just come across, uh, if you look at my, my video, two videos again about uh, improving in, in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, you come across a wee challenge like this and you just have to take a wee second to think, how am I going to get, how am I going to get around it? Or is there another tool I can use instead of the clone or, or patch? So we're going to look at smudge. 
So again, the con contextual toolbar comes down. We'll make it maybe around that size. We'll make the strength 50. What the flow does is if I just brush this bit here, you can see it hardly, it hardly moved there. If I bring the flow to 100% with the same brush stroke, you can see it really, it really smudges it an awful lot. So I don't want to smudge it that much. I'll maybe bring it down. And again, if we made it 100 strength, with that flow, look at that. We're doing, we're doing some mad stuff there. So, I like to keep the strength about fifty because with that, at least it does go off. If we bring that down to say twenty-five, it's not as strong either. But for the purposes of this, I think fifty, and the flow maybe twenty-five, maybe a wee bit more. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe the flow fifty. And simply what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and kind of, it just smudges. It just smudges all this text away. And I know that looks a wee bit wonky. I'll neaten that up by trying to get this line a wee bit. And what's straight away with a few quick, quick texts, we'll go into the, or a few quick drags. We'll go into the history toolbar. I'll not go all the way back like I normally do. I'll just go to there. Sometimes this is really nice fun. This shows you a complete overview, but you can also click on a layer before I started the smudge. So that's what it looked like. And that's really nice. And maybe maybe I'm just, just saying this, but it actually does make it look a wee bit a wee bit more like metal too, which is a nice it's not the reason why I wanted to do it, but it just you know I'm just dragging, dragging the pencil, clicking and dragging. And well, let me see if we can get that wee bit. And again, down here, you'll hardly ever see this. And even if we zoom out just a wee bit, it does actually have a wee bit of a metal effect. And because uh, I like it so much, I could be tempted just to Just to go down this here, and I think this is really nice. And I didn't actually do this on the on the real poster, but by just by just doing that, it actually makes it look a wee bit a wee bit a wee bit heavier, a wee bit more like metal. And I'll maybe just do I'm maybe going too far doing these wee bits. Again, you just have to be be careful. I'll maybe lower the brush just a wee bit for these wee just. And again, they're very small things, but now if we go back to the history brush and if we go up to when we started our smudge tool, it just changes the whole the whole lightsaber. And of course this text, so we'll go down. So that's really nice. I'm really, really happy with that. And that's the smudge tool. And that's taking away that text. There's other ways you could use it with maybe clouds. Even these here beams. We'll maybe look at these here We uh, lens flares to see what it would do. Again, if you know me, you're nearly... <laughs> you'll know that I like to look for things to... Is, is there a way we can improve it? Is there a way we can use this? And uh, sometimes when you're having more fun, you just want to find things too. It's just this wee layer. If I turn it on and off... You'll see this should actually be green, which I think is Luke Skywalker's. So it's not even a Sith Jedi letting the Star Wars team down here today, guys. But it's all the props we had and we had to go with it. So uh, it should be green. We made it red. That's okay. Don't tell anyone. And now that we've got that layer selected, we'll go to our smudge tool. We'll make this a wee bit. We'll make it a wee bit bigger and we'll just see what happens. That there is quite nice. Again, before, after, we'll go before, and we'll maybe just to really, we'll put the strength and maybe the flow 75 and the strength 100 just to see what it does. Well, that's too much. That's wild. And that's too much. Yeah, far too much. Put the strength to 50, the flow to 50 to see what that, see what that's like. If a wee bit wonky there. I think the first time I actually did it was the was the best. Yeah, probably the 
And I'll just leave that. The first time I did it was actually the best. And then I started mucking around. But you could start doing wee individual strokes of the lightsaber. Again, I didn't do this on the actual thing. It's just really for purposes, just for using it as a wee example of this. So that's the smudge tool. Again, we could use the clone stamp or something else, but it turned out well. It, it just makes it look a wee bit more metal, a wee bit more realistic. And it, it more importantly, it was, uh, or just as important, it took a lot less time. So again, we're probably going to look at this poster again because there's an awful lot, so much to learn. And if there's anything you really want to know, put it in the comments below and we'll, we will come to it eventually. But uh, re really, really fun project to work on. So there you have it. Hopefully you found this video useful and helpful. And if it was, please like this video. Please subscribe as I'll be bringing out more videos like this every week. Feel free to comment below as I read and reply to every comment. If you like this video, you might also want to check out this video where I explain more about the Star Wars poster used in today's example. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.